This verse goes with this type of detail. Of all the places Robert ends up going and stuff, it fits a lot of them. Psalms 103, verse 16. As for man, his days are like a flower of the field. When the wind passes over, it vanishes, and its place remembers it no more. Hey everybody, it's Robert and you're watching Sidestep Adventures. I'm out here with Mr. Scott and today we're going to kind of solve a mystery. Um, a couple weeks ago, Scott, Dan and I found the ruins of what appeared to be an old plantation house and an unknown family cemetery. So we think we figured out who is buried there, but before we go back there and tell you who's buried there, we're going to take a stop back at a cemetery that we've been to before that does have markers and take a look at it. So let's go. That helped solve some of it. Yeah, it yeah. did. It did help solve some of it. So let's go. It's something to throw at them. <laughs> Before we actually go in the woods, Scott had to get a snake stick, so. You're not supposed to say that word. <laughs> That's right. Dang it. All right, so we have returned to the William T. Hall Cemetery here, which is on part of what used to be the William T. Hall Plantation. And Scott actually has been doing some research on William Hall. And before we do that, or before we get into that, I'm gonna open up the book here, A Rockaway and Talbot, which I did last time we were here, and talk about this, uh, this plantation. It says in the Talbot County Census of 1860, William T. Hall was listed as 41 years of age with $2,400 of real estate and $7,340 of personal estate. His wife, Evelyn H. Beach Hall, was 38. They were born in Georgia. The site of the Hall Plantation House is in land lot number 52, 22nd Land District, Rough Edge, about two and a half miles southeast of Matthews Chapel United Methodist Church. William T. Hall's family cemetery is there. An iron fence and a pattern of alternating arched and straight paling surrounds it. With ornamental corner posts capped by spears, there is no gate and it encloses only two marked graves. There is no gate. There is a gate. Sure is. There is a gate. That's interesting. Um, Do you have a photo in there of them? Yeah, it does have photos. Oh, they're laying down? They're yeah. laying down. They look, I think these photos were taken in the 60s, and yeah. they look exactly the same they're in then. The same spot. They're in the same spot. You can see that one's leaning up against the fence. Fence, yep. They're in the right. same spot. Um, William T. Hall had a bunch of children. I think it was 14 children he had over 24 years, I think, what Scott and I read earlier. Um, survivors of the Hall family in 1885 were John W. and W. J. Hall who were attorneys in Tobleton. So as we, we take a look in here we find them buried in the cemetery with the gate. There is Mr. Hall's grave right there and his wife which says our mother at the top buried right there now Scott you found out that mr. Hall here was a veteran yep of the war at age 42 in September of 1863 he enlisted as a private all the way through the war he was a private when he got out he was company K the 27th infantry Georgia Confederate States Army and we don't know the reason why at 42, we suspect it had a lot to do with his son. Because his son at age 16, what did I say his name was? Thomas. 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 Thomas Hall at age 16 in the month of July enlisted at Company K, 27th Infantry, Georgia, Confederate States of America, our Army. And... Just imagine at 42 going off and fighting a war 
and they saw a lot of action during their time, including Cold Harbor and several other places, the Battle of the Crater, the Siege of Pittsburgh, uh, Petersburg. Uh, they were mustered out at uh, Columbia, South Carolina. So they were, at, by that time, they were under uh, General uh, George B. Gordon. Um, you know, I think it was something like 26 April, 1865. They both went through the whole thing and survived. And there's a lot of people in this county is while I was researching this that did not okay we're talking about high attrition rates I, we noted where one company it was basically the first company to leave out of here Alpha Company 4th Infantry Regiment Georgia 80 men mustered out and less than 20 returned after the war so I mean that gives you an idea of what the attrition rate was but uh, to survive it and we don't know how uh, you know bad their psyche was either afterwards. That's another thing a lot of people don't understand or can't comprehend. These guys went through hell. I did 20 years in the Marine Corps, saw five different armed conflicts, but we're all candy asses compared to these guys, you know. So that's uh, saying a lot. No matter which side you were on, you know, during that war, it was hell. Now, William T. Hall here was born in 1818, and he died here in Rough Edge in 1885. His wife, who was part of another prominent family in Rough Edge, the Beach family, she was born in 1823. They married in 1840, and she died in 1901 and was buried here. And this is the current condition of their little cemetery, which is, aside from the toppled headstones, very intact in the fact that the fence is here. It hasn't been messed with. It is interesting that the book says there's no gate, but there is. And their stones have been toppled here since at least the 1960s. This is also the site of the William T. Hall Plantation, which we're standing on right now, somewhere out here was their home place. All right, so now that we've seen the William T. Hall plantation here, uh, or the remnants of it, which is just a cemetery, we're going to uh, go explore the other site that we saw and put the puzzle pieces together as to who was buried there. Good size tree. Alright, so we are back at the spot of the unknown plantation and unknown cemetery that we found a couple weeks ago. And we're going to take a look at the book again. So when I first found out about the uh, William T. Hall plantation and plantation cemetery, um, I learned about it from this book. It was one that uh, neither Dan nor I had ever been to before or, or knew about. We found it in this book and went to it. Um, this really caught my attention. After it talks about the William T. Hall Plantation, there's a note that says the Hall Home Place House. The old Home Place House of the Hall family was probably built about 1845 to 55. It burned years ago, but was recalled as being a house of two stories in the Greek Revival style. Some 60 yards from the site, an old family cemetery is surrounded by a rock wall about three feet high. Huge oaks, some dead and fallen, with others originally in the front yard, formed a gloomy glade when visited by the Rockaway author. There were no visible markers for the graves within the enclosure. So when I initially read that, I was thinking that the, the Hall Home Place house that was described here was talking about the William T. Hall Plantation house. And I thought it would have been near the cemetery, um, since for the William T. Hall uh, plantation, it says that the site of the Hall plantation house is nearby the cemetery. But I came to realize later that it was not talking about the William T. Hall plantation, but was talking about a different Hall plantation, cemetery, and house. And putting the puzzle pieces together, we figured out that 
the ruins of the plantation house that are up here and the cemetery with the no marked graves all of that perfectly fits the description of the old home place on the old hall home place including the big trees although there's not as many standing today as there were in the 1960s when the rockaway author uh, talked about the gloomy glade but we can still see that that's kind of that terrain so we've done some research and we think we know who is buried up in the cemetery so we're going to go take another look at the cemetery and also the ruins of the house and uh, scott will tell you because he's been he's been researching like mad on this so we think we got it figured out so let's go we got it so i should also add that the way we originally found this site here was not from the rockaway book um talking about the old hall home place house it's actually one that we had found on a 1975 map and didn't know about um, again and wanted to uh, to see and check out and Scott was our navigator that day and led us right to it um, and it's always it's been a mystery and uh, it's really cool that we've figured out whose plantation it was and uh, who well, may be buried here you can see and there's a rough wall already a terrace rather um, there was no clue you know, that's the hard thing. I feel for all these other families that might be looking for somebody. But, uh, you know, the resources sometimes are there, but they're not always. Even you and I were had some doubts about this for a good while. They're trying to match up the dates, the ages, and stuff like that. And that's another interesting thing Robert's going to have to tell you about in the story here. But uh, it's it's uh, it sounds like a good story. So, but there's still a mystery as to the person, the people who are buried there, how they passed. It's not listed. We don't know. Okay, and uh, we haven't, or we haven't found a record on it yet. So, let's go up there and have a look. All right. So we're coming up on the ruins of the house, and again, this is where uh, imagination comes into play to actually picture what this must have looked like. Um, obviously it had long been burned down by the 1960s when the Rockaway author was writing these books. But we can see this curve right here. This is stacked stone terraced wall which would have been for the front yard. And I said in the initial video this very much reminded me of the ruins of the old Whitehead Plantation. Um, so I can kind of take some of that and compare it to this and figure out uh, some things like it looks like at the Whitehead Plantation there was a horse mounting stone um, out there and a place on the curb where you would step off of buggies and it looks very similar to this. We've got another, another level of terrace. Yeah. Another level of terrace. Then as we walk further up here to where the house actually stood All right, so this is the actual site of the house. Over there is one chimney pile, and over there is one chimney pile. And it's so hard to imagine what the house must have looked like here. Um, it's described as being built in 1845 to 55 and being a, a two-story plantation house. It would have stood right here. An actual Greek revival style as well. Greek revival style, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to imagine it. now. That doesn't mean it was gone the wind looking, but it still probably had a lot of architecture to it. And a lot of these things weren't painted yet either. You know, it's the best they might've had was some white wash or milk paint, but this, it's, it's not like, you know, Terra, you know. So that's a lot of, th a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, this far south, you start get into the 1850s before they get real detailed on them and stuff. Even the old Maxwell house over there, or Maddox house. Yeah. But still it's something. Now, what do we know talking about Thomas, I'm sorry, William T. His obituary I read that he 
had built a small cottage near to where his gravesite is, okay? And lived his later years there. While his sister maintained this house. So we know that she was still here. There was still a hall here, but I don't know what her last name was, but she was a descendant. Right. Okay, so we go from there. And just to take note of the land, the, the Rockaway author described this gloomy glade full of big, huge oak trees. There's the remains of one. We've obviously got one here. They even see a really big cedar tree out behind the house over there. Yeah. So when we were initially here, we had only discovered the house by chance, or the house site by chance of looking for the cemetery. And we had no idea at the time that it was most likely the hall site um, there. And we headed down into the woods and just happened to find the cemetery. And again, by the description in the Rockaway book of a cemetery with no, no markers and a rock wall of three foot high, it perfectly matches what we found here near the old home place back there, which we now know was the hall home place. And here is the burial ground. Again, matches a, a wall that's about three foot high. I imagine it may have been in better condition when the Rockaway author um, wrote about it. I wish he had published a picture of it. Um, but in the first time we were here, we had no idea who may be buried here. I don't think um, he did. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't know who was buried yeah. here either. Um, but Scott has been doing a lot of research. And I think... Uh, <laughs> I think has figured out who some of the burials are here. Now, we've got two graves that are outside of the rock wall over there. And I think we had decided that there, it looked like there were two adult graves and possibly two children's graves here. Um, so we may not know who everybody is here, but we know We know whose grave site family-wise it is. Yeah. And it is a hall. Yep. And it is, uh, William Riley Hall, who died in 1884. And what was the date? September? Not, it was January, January, January 9th. January 9th, 1884, and his wife died January 10th. January 10th, 1884. And her name was Nancy. Her name was Nancy. I tracked her down. I don't have her last name. We were able to find that. I think it was Statham. 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 Stat, stat, yeah, Statham. Statham, yeah. And uh, the thing is, why did they, you know, how did they pass? We don't know. You know, was it a house fire? Was it an accident? Was it cholera? I mean, we just don't, or typhoid fever? Uh, the, the many things that would take somebody back in those days if it's not recorded what the actual cause was, we were able to find uh, he owed debts. And so uh, we found where the county was appointing uh, the, not the grand master, but the uh, executor of his estate to sell this property up to like worth about $400 to pay some bills off. And the guy who was appointed as the executor of his will is the guy who built my house, okay? Newton P. Character, character, and uh, we found that as well in the court documents. So it's uh, and it was witnessed by a beach, which was William T.'s wife was a beach, and so without an actual marker sitting there, we don't have a hundred percent, but it can't be anybody else that we've been able to find. And I've, I've been able to find some strange things about this individual and Miss Nancy that uh, I'll let Robert tell y'all about that. All right, so what we've uh, put together is this is the home place of William Riley Hall, who was the father of William T. Hall, buried down there. Um, it's, they came here as early settlement. It looks like they were here by 1830, I believe, we confirmed. Of course, this area wasn't opened up for settlement until 1828, so they were early settlers here. 
Assuming the date in the Rockaway book is, is correct, they had built a big plantation house, what we would think of as a plantation house by 1845 to 55. They probably had built something smaller before then, and then um, as wealth grew, built a nicer house. They only had one child, uh, and that was William T. Hall, and this is where it gets really murky. William Riley Hall was born in 1804. Uh, his son, William T. Hall, was born in 1818, uh, which means that William Riley Hall, if those birth dates are accurate, and all of the records that we found so far indicate that they are accurate, um, William Riley Hall fathered William T. Hall when he was 14 years old. Now, William Riley Hall's wife at the time was only 11 years old. So you've got the kind of strange uh, thing there with a 14-year-old father and 11-year-old mother. But I have doubts that William T. Hall's mother, if those, if those ages are correct, I don't believe that William T. Hall's mother was Nancy. Um, we know William T. Hall was born in 1818, which would have made William Riley Hall 14 at the time. The thing about that is, is William... Riley Hall didn't marry his wife until he was 20 years old, which means that William T. Hall would have been six by that time. And back in those days, if uh, you know, it would have been very commonplace for them to have gotten married. Um, Shotgun win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, it, it throws some doubt. In my mind, aside from just the ages, the fact that the marriage happened after the birth of his son as to whether Nancy, William Riley Hall's wife, was actually the mother of William T. Hall. But we do believe that they are buried here. William T. Hall had 14 children in 24 years, I think it was written. So that could be the child's graves that we see up there because I don't believe that all 14 of his children live to adulthood. Um, so we could have some child burials here that were children of William T. Hall. And I would definitely say that William Riley Hall and his wife Nancy are buried here. Um, this is the old Hall home place and they did die here. But without markers, we can't say for sure. Um, again, we've got two graves that are in here and two graves that are outside of the wall as well. Just point out, yeah. okay, it's a timeline. If we look at, you know, pre-Civil War, there was a lot of growth, a lot of development, uh, prosperity in the region, okay? During the Civil War, hard times. Post-Civil War, extremely hard times. Exactly. Absolutely no money. Now, yeah. 1875, 1878 is when the, the region started to get its feet back on the ground, but it didn't mean y'all, everybody. Right, absolutely. And this family definitely suffered. Yeah, I was going to say that this is very similar to other post-Civil War Depression graves that I've seen, um, which would make sense why there are no markers here. Uh, we don't know exactly when William T. Hall's marker was put up. Again, we get into an interesting thing with dates here. William Riley Hall died January 9th, 1884. His wife died January 10th, 1884. So they died a day apart. That's what Scott was talking about. We don't know the cause of death. Um, but his son died only a year later in 1885. Now his son has a marker and his son's wife has a marker. Um, both William T. and Evelyn have markers. Uh, Evelyn's marker was from 1901 and William T. Hall's marker has got a death date on it, but we don't know when that marker was put up. So we can also go there that the children who became lawyers, who became more prosperous, could have put those markers up later, like at the time of death of their mother. Uh, post-1900 as prosperity came back to that family. Uh, but very, very fascinating gravesite here and very cool that we're able to really put the pieces together. If, if you look through in here, you can see an indention right there and right there that are both what you would say would be infant sized inside the wall, which, you know, again, I would hazard to guess that it may have been young children of William T. Hall that died and were buried here. And then we know again that William T. Hall built a house up there where he's buried, so he could have been buried on his later property. We've got 
got two graves that are outside of the wall here. And you know, these could be, uh, this could be William R. and Nancy right here, if you don't know. Um, the other interesting thing is William R. Hall's parents. Um, I lost track of them when I was doing research. They, they died 1833, so they could be very early burials out here um, as well. It's not likely that they came with, because they were both older in age, um, so you wouldn't think that they would have come here for early settlement, but they could have been brought by their kid here and been an early burial. Um, the reason that I, I bring that up is their record just kind of disappears by the time they die in 1833. There's no marked burial for them either. Um, so interesting there too. And you said, um, Scott, earlier that there was a sister of William T. Hall that was buried up here. Would it, yeah. I didn't say buried. She was or, or lived here. Yes, she but, ran the um, house. William T. Hall didn't have any siblings, so would that have been his? That's what the that's what the obituary said. Did it? Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Was a sister-in-law or something? That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. I don't know. Yeah, because we found no no other children that were listed from William Riley Hall and Nancy. Yeah. That the obituary said a sister. That's interesting. Go back and let's go back and reread that sometime. Yeah. And uh, verify. It. So yeah. It's another mystery here. Okay. That's another thing is originally I thought that this was prior to the Civil War. Yeah. Okay. And that's why it's worth going out and doing the research Absolutely. because I definitely thought that this was uh, prior to. Now, somebody made a comment on the last, on the first video about this that you know was this part of Sherman coming through and everything like that and that's that did not happen mm -hmm. Sherman didn't come this far south to Talbot County now Wilson's Raiders did come through Talbot County and they actually bivouacked in uh, Talbotton for a little bit but they didn't come down this road this they, they wouldn't have been it here they would not have been involved in this and we know that William Riley was still here Post-war, yeah. Post-war, 1870, he's in the census. Uh, in 1860, he's he's in the census. He's, he's got, got 78 slaves uh, to his property value and along with other lands and everything. How it reduced so much or how he got himself into debt, it could be a lot to do with the post-Civil War. You know, his land was all out here being worked and all of a sudden there's no... There's no labor, there's no nothing, and uh, and he's up in age. And uh, so, you know, they had to start selling things off to survive. And you, you make a good point about uh, him having 78 slaves because often where there's a plantation, there's a slave cemetery burial ground for the enslaved, which would be interesting. It's definitely not this. This is, this is not... Um, typical of a, a slave cemetery but it, it would be interesting that there probably is a hall slave cemetery somewhere on the remains of this plantation that you know we probably will never find but interesting to note that and i agreed with you um about this being post civil war and i actually uh we think thought it was pre-civil war pre-civil war um and it actually could be pre-civil war still the rock wall could be yeah if this is where some of uh, William T. Hall's children are buried. Right. Or some other distant relatives. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. And uh, again, the uh, when I was tracing William R. Hall's parents down here, um, or tracing them, they were in South Carolina, I believe, and that's where they disappeared. There's no burial yeah, or death record. Carolina. Yeah, so his parents could, could be buried there too. Could be looking yeah. at three generations, but that is complete conjecture there, only because I couldn't find a burial listing for... William R. Hall, of course, who we know is buried here, or his parents. Right. But we've definitely got uh, some interesting graves out here. Uh, I wish uh, I wish we could say for sure who everyone buried here is, but we know for sure, um, or we don't know for sure, but we we can say, you know, with almost certainty that William R. Hall and his wife Nancy are indeed buried here. Definitely. Worth finding out, though. I'm glad we came back on it.
No, me too. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's always cool. Um, we found a mystery here. An old map led us to a cemetery, uh, which in turn we found the ruins of what appeared to be a plantation house. And then we were able to go back and confirm that um, with a better understanding of how the Rockaway author was describing the area. Then Scott went in and actually found us some names on there. So uh, just amazing history here. Always very cool to solve a mystery and uh, get this place that would otherwise just be here forgotten documented. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Also stay tuned because we will in the future be going to go visit Thomas Hall, who is the son of William T. Hall, um, who's buried nearby here and who served with his father during the Civil War. We will go back and visit his grave in the future. So I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.